I'm free. I'm freezing cold from the shit they dumped. And freedom is the only way to the real spiritual reality. Lord, you know I gotta love this life I live, but I never ever leave the temple. When I realize there's no such thing as homeless, that's just the devil's lies. Then I never even leave the temple. But they said I'm a free freak. I'm freaky. Because freedom in a socialist state gave me a little taste of reality. Welcome to Trey's Myths and Tunes. Trey's. Timeless 15 minutes of explain. MDs who honor and respect their Hippocratic Oath, Part 2. If you didn't catch Part 1, Thomas Staz in the 1950s, P Peter Bregan, two psychiatrists who honored their Hippocratic Oath. We also have Dr. Joseph Mercola, Dr. Christiane Northrup, Dr. Tom Cowan. And um, when I s fell over and got run, I, I blacked out. No lawyers would help me. And the police two, and a, a, a witness and the guy who drove the PG&E truck said, he slowed down and ran me over after I fell over my bike. And somehow I healed all 15 broken bones in four to six months. But the third day I was in the Santa Clara Valley Trauma Center. And God bless that EMT who drove me over there. The social worker for the hospital gave me a um, palm computer thing. So I was watching an Andrew Kaufman video in the hospital. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Kaufman, MD, is a MD who gets his MD renewed, who doesn't believe in germ theory because he is teaching people the accurate truth. I'm watching an interview with him and Amanda Voorhees, another brilliant uh, naturopathic healer, doctor, with an ND, in their discussion that was two years old. And the, one of the first things he mentioned is, David Rodriguez's weekly fires at, in Santa Cruz and how that inspired them to have their own um, fire meeting in New York. So freedom is contagious in a similar way to, um, you know, the deceptors, the Decepticons, slick, trick, fear-based spreading of lies and myth information but freedom could spread just as fast. That's why they had to lock Dave up for two weeks and, you know, make him feel that this town is, is under total black magic control, which it is in some part, some neighborhoods. Um, and that also I wanted to say, I feel is why a huge reason why I have a small audience. Um, this one, person um, told me that the numbers were inaccurate. I don't understand what they meant, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing would shock me as far as hacking. On the flip side, this type of content, I'm totally inspired by I Ireland Clark's courage and uh, to bring forth, you know, I'm coming from some of the same sources as her as well. So when I saw her, her stuff, I was impressed. But um, so we're hacking, uh, she says we're hacking the matrix, you know, we're trying to bring light. And that's what these MDs did and are continuing to do. They're anchoring down. They're making sure that um, Rockefeller's insane ass system doesn't just get, you know, actually completely suicide itself, actually. because Those who actually obey the Hippocratic Oath or follow it, um, 
they have self a lot of self-respect and a lot of courage. But the number one for me in, in this last battle or this last the war, World War lockdown of 2020 was Dr. Carrie Madej, who after they invited her to the meeting, um, you know, the WH, um, whoever, the letter groups for their takeover plan. And, and uh, she's probably 100 miles from the CDC in the state of Georgia, her family physician office a mother Christian activist. And when she got home from the meeting, instead of um, doing what they said, she posted some videos about patent 060606, the Lucifer Ace MasterCard microchip. Um, and um, you know what? I tried to warn people. I showed my brother's best friend that video and he took the shot so that's i guess you know and another man i, I read him the whole pamphlet of, about the agenda i i told him for 20 minutes what bill gates has openly said his plans are and he didn't um he was such a pollyanna he didn't believe me and he took it so i've lost a few battles but uh I'm very thankful that there is a freedom of information and uh, hopefully I didn't cross the line with that last um, paragraph or so because it was all spontaneous. But yeah, so after um, 15 years on these all these drugs, my, my dad supposedly fell over and passed on. And, um, when I speak about aliens or interdimensional um, predators, um, narcissistic entities. Um, there's, of course, a lot of stinkers who are going to say I'm a schizophrenic and I'm insane because they don't want you to know. And, um, you know, the, the other thing is, um, how else do you think I've, I've gotten away with it, being a soldier on this, this battle, on the boots on the ground for, uh, like, shit, I was born again in this town about 10, about 10 years ago, uh, more than that, about 15 years ago. And ever since then, I've spoken out against Hollywood and all of the things that are owned by the inverted ones. And I've told people they're inverted. So that's how all these guys were. You know, Dr. Kerry Madej is a, a Christian, um, maybe Bible thumper, I don't know. She says a Christian prayer before her speeches, and then she'll do, she'll show people it's really terrifying. She takes micro. She takes a microscope picture, a microscope of a what the blood looks like from people who took it. You're not going to find that on YouTube, but if you go to BitChute or Odyssey or any other one, you can probably find it. So the good of infiltrated. Um, the allopathic, which, like I say, is, has really been completely designed to be, uh, you know, controlled by the these others. So, um, but these MDs who are good, their spirits could not be broken. Yeah. I mean, they could do the they could do all the memor memorization to get an MD. In these few MDs, the power of the good is stronger. They have proven that the power of, of goodness is stronger than evil um, by shaping the future of medicine, even if they were attacked or, or even got killed, some of them. Um, Laura Eisenhower was on, on welfare, um, and she got off it and got into... Um, she told me the name, Lisa Renee, so she really... Um, exposed me to a lot of truth I wasn't aware of. Um, in the field of law lawyering um, or baristas, those who, who took the, the bar to go into that that black magic ritual to become a lawyer, um, Gary Spence is an amazing lawyer who 
who actually wrote books about how the whole system was corrupt and unconstitutional and how it needed to go back. Um, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, is another one who's just, of course, you can sometimes make be heavy-handed on making Republican laws for, for things, but um, he does that to try to protect the people from these these inverted ones. In Santa Cruz, California, there was a guy named Monteith, Stanley Monteith, uh, in the 1980s, and he was trying to test people for AIDS, um, and he wasn't allowed to because the homosexual activist in the government had uh, like made it illegal to test. So he became involved in, in, in activism and about the truth, about the numbers, and about um, epidemics simply from uh, not being allowed to, to discern the test. Um, it was interesting from a whole different angle. He wasn't even into activism. He's another one to check out. Um, if you want to learn the history of how the politics um, has manipulated the data and the, um, and these so-called epidemics, um, and, and there's others that say that neither of these really have ever been that no, none of these things have ever been isolated. You know, um, that's also been said by many people. There was um, America's America's frontline doctors. You know, this guy in the Journey to Truth podcast um, I was watching today, he said the floodgates of disclosure is opening. Well, that's true also about this field, about the truth, about what's real medicine and healing. Um but America's frontline doctors, it was like 180 MDs, went to the steps of, of the Capitol Hill right in the middle of the lockdown. And they all said that these um, certain other things that you can look up that, that's all well documented was safer and more effective and doing better. So it's all been, um, it's all been shown for those who have eyes to see, you know. As um, Yeshua, the master, said to the disciples uh, when they said, When will we see the kingdom of heaven, master, when we die, um, when we pass on, and, or when we're born again or enlightened? And he said, If, if ye, ye that have eyes to see, you will see that you are there right now. So there's some in all walks of life, and government, and people with medical MDs, even psychiatrists, a few who have been had the courage to to hold the sword, the vajra of truth, of peace, of self-respect, of discernment in the system. Okay, it's not an impossibility, but it takes a lot of self-respect and courage. And for those of you um, secret agents, and those of you in my blood kin who are in the system still, mentally or physically, who are watching. Maybe you can, you know, regain some of your ability to remember the courage to be peaceful and respectful and be yourself because only you can prevent forest fires from causing inflammation to shut and cloud your third eye and fill it with cancerous cells of discontent. You could do that by eating omega-3s. You do that by meditation. You do that with CBD. But it's all about your will. If 51% of your body, mind, spirit is respectful and healthy, 51% of humanity is healthy and respectful and peaceful and harmless. 51% It's the aggregate. Then you'll start to see that this world is not a violent psychopath. When you see that the power of good is stronger than the power of evil and the false reality of the demiurge, the, the archontic, the um, energy parasitic control of the dark satanic forces, then you understand you are playing with shadows. You are obeying, de obeying suicidal death shadows, narcissistic parasites that don't have any respect, won't live on. But the future will be peaceful and respectful and harmless. Subscribe if you like this. And enjoy the harmless MDs.